When the world around him was at its worst, friends of Kenji Goto say he was at his best. Man with the heart. Man with the heart. A heart that pulled Goto where few others dared to go. I found him a bit different from the other. Hiromasa Nakai remembers Goto's strong handshake and his even stronger passion for journalism. Why do you think he went into dangerous places like Aleppo, like Iraq? Because he wants to tell us the stories. Stories he shared with anyone who listened, giving lectures like this one for UNICEF last year about Syria's bloody conflict. Syrian people suffering three years and a half. It's enough. Goto made this video in late October, just before what would be his final trip to Syria. He disappeared hours later in ISIS-held territory and reappeared about two weeks ago in this propaganda video next to his friend, Haruna Yukawa, captured by ISIS two months earlier. Why do you think he went to Syria? Maybe he, he want to rescue Mr. Uh, Yukawa. Longtime friend and fellow war zone journalist Takeharu Watai says Goto always made time to call his family when he was on the road, which made his direct pleas to his wife Rinko in separate ISIS videos last week all the more heartbreaking. Why they killed him? The final video showed Goto facing death with courage and dignity. I have nothing now but tears, said his mother, hours after the news broke. Japanese newspapers printed special editions. Goto was the lead story on every channel. Protesters stood in silence. It's very sad, but uh, uh, Japanese journalists have to go for coverage in war zone. Watai fears Goto paid the price for his prime minister's public pledge to support the coalition against ISIS. He says, despite the risk, he's willing to go back. We have to continue report like him. He says Goto's final story is his own life, a story of kindness, courage, and compassion, a story to share with Goto's two young daughters who lost their father to the same conflict he dedicated his life to cover. Will Ripley, CNN, Tokyo.